All right. Introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Frank. So my name is Rick Cutspol. I'm a product planner within uh, Broadcom's Data Center Solutions Group. Um, I own the CXL ecosystem. And with me today, I have Srini Bagalkoti. He, uh, he is a peer of mine in the pr planning organization, and he owns the PCIe and CXL ecosystems. And what we wanted to do today, and it was a great follow-on to the Fabric discussion, is talk about some of our recent changes and our recent updates to our product plans um, in order to enable uh, you know, an open AI ecosystem. And so with that, I'm, um, Srini's gonna start. Thanks, Rick. So this is the clicker. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Srini Bhagalgot. And so there's a lot of excitement, discussion, and you know, about AI, um, NICs, SSDs, CXL memory modules, and we just heard, um, you know, CXL, not only CXL memory modules, but the use cases behind that. And so what we want to tell you today is how we are enabling that P PCIe and CXL ecosystem. Um, apart from all these uh, various components like uh, accelerators, NICs, and we need a fabric. And we just heard PCIe and CXL fabric and how important it is. And we want to tell you what we are doing from our side on enabling that ecosystem and not just enabling, but accelerating the ecosystem. So at a 100,000 foot level, uh, this is our uh, PCIe and CXL switch roadmap. Um, it's, it's very simple. Uh, the way you read this is we, we name all our switches Atlas. Uh, Gen 4 is Atlas 1, Gen 5 is Atlas 2, and so on. And as you can see, we've, we've, we've been doing this for a while. And you know, one thing that you can count on us to do well is to execute um, at a very high quality silicon, deliver high quality silicon at a predictable schedule. Um, and we've been doing it generation after generation. So Atlas 1 is our Gen 4, Atlas 2 is our Gen 5 switch, and it's been shipping for a couple of years and it's, it's been doing very well. It's our single most successful switch ever. And in and through this, um, again, as you heard, the PCIe switch itself matured. Uh, previously, what was just a, a simple fan out connectivity to expand the, switch, uh, you know, the CPU PCIe lanes, now it's matured and grown up to be a, a, an open standards based uh, fabric within a system, especially AI servers. So you have all these various components, all these various use cases like memory pooling, memory sharing, and then expansion, you need some a fabric, and PCIe and CXL is the right fabric, internal fabric, and that's how the switches, we have been evolving, we have been doing our part to, you know, in that maturing of PCIe into uh, an internal fabric. And that means adding the right lanes, uh, right sizing the, uh, you know, radix, uh, adding the right silicon features, adding the right software features, uh, and also a lot of ecosystem enablement type of thing, like telemetry, diagnostics, and we, we've been kind of, pushing our PCIe switch roadmap in that direction. And like I said, Atlas II has been shipping for a while, and we are looking forward to repeat the same success with Atlas III. Um, Atlas III is our PCIe Gen 6 uh, and CXL 3.1. Um, we will be fully 3.1 compliant. Um, that includes everything that you just heard um, you know, in the previous um, session, Vincent. I mean, it will support CXL.cache, CXL.mem, all the PBR, the, f um, uh, the fabric features, uh, fabric manager uh, support. So this is going to be our 144 lane uh, in the fine nanometer. Uh, it will have uh, not only the required features, obviously, the Gen 6. Uh, in fact, we will support PCIe Gen 6.1, uh, CXL 3.1. Um, it will also support several optional features like FLIT performance measurements, FLIT uh, error, uh, error injection, things that are really needed to have a very successful and stable um, AI systems. And apart from that, we'll also have some features that are not, not even part of the spec, like you know peer-to-peer -peer across virtual hierarchies, not only in the CXL domain, but also in the PCIe domain. Uh, we'll support the whole complement of CXL device, dot .mem, dot .cache, like I said, in future GFAM that we just talked about. And underpinning all this is uh, our best-in-class CERDIS. This is not going to be an easy transition, uh, Gen 5 to Gen 6, like Rick will talk about in a second, how difficult it is. And so our best-in-class CERDIS underpins our Atlas 3 product line. 
Um, and apart from that, it will also have one cool feature called uh, embedded PC analyzer. So p like I said, one of the things that we are doing is doing, we are doing our part to evolve PCIe as the best choice for uh, interconnect in the open AI systems. So part of that is being able to diagnose uh, not just the PCIe switch issues, but the, uh, the endpoints and the host connected to the PCIe. And so every by 16 port will have an embedded PCIe analyzer. So externally in band, out of band, you can connect to it and then do majority of your uh, debugging that you would otherwise require an external uh, PCIe analyzer uh, for. Um, and we are taping, the, taping this out in July next year, and then we will have the samples available, uh, customer samples available in December next year. And this has already been the pre-silicon uh, environment has been running very successfully and stably. And now Rick uh, will talk about what we want to do to enable others to join us now and uh, kind of take advantage of where, um, you know, at, at this platform. All right, thanks, Srini. Um, you know, so there's a lot of excitement, a lot going on. But at the same time, as owner of the ecosystem, right, I have to keep an eye on a lot of the complexities. And one of the largest complexities that we're going to face as we move to Atlas III is the, is the transition to PCI Gen 6. Right, we've, we've been through a number, we've been through a lot of technology transitions. I mean, everybody in the room has PCI Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4. Those have largely been speed bumps um, using the same general uh, CERTES infrastructure. Um, but now as we move to, well, we, uh, sh I should say with the exception of Gen 2 to Gen 3, there was an encoding change. But, and, and that caused, that did cause some delays, uh, you know, as, as the ecosystem moved to Gen 3. But now as we go to Gen 5, right, we're, we're taking on a whole new CERTES architecture with PAM4. Not that, not that PAM4 is, you know, real new or all that hard. Um, Broadcom has a number of product lines that are based on PAM4, and so it's a very well understood technology. But from an ecosystem perspective, everybody connecting all of their stuff together, um, PAM4 will be very new. And remember, then everything has to be backwards compatible, right? So it, it is not only PAM4, but then it has to be backwards compatible um, to traditional architectures. And, and yeah, you know, it doesn't sound that hard, but it, it's gonna take a, it's, it's gonna be a learning curve and there's, and there's gonna be a lot of work uh, to make it work seamlessly across the ecosystem. And there are other things that we're adding, adding to it, right? Um, so in some of the previous conversations, you've heard about flip mode, right? This is to enable forward error correction and things like this that are all new and have to be done correctly um, to be able to make, make this all work. Another complication is the differences in flip modes between PCI and some of the, some of the CXL um, specifications as pointed out earlier. Um, and so, so in order to help with this, um, and also the learning curve of CXL itself, I mean, you saw in the previous presentation of all the translations that are required by the switches, right? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of learning that comes along with that. So what we're doing is, we're doing a couple things. One is right now we have an FPGA implementation of Atlas III. Atlas III is the Gen 6 device that Srini was just talking about. Uh, we have that in the lab today. It's up and running. Um, we are testing it with a number of different CXL uh, components on, on both sides. Um, and we want to open that, you know, and, and, we're, and we're seeing a lot of advantage of doing that. And what we want to do is we want to open this up to the ecosystem, you know, at, at, a, at a larger scale. So what we want to do is work with the different vendors, um, the CXL vendors, to be able to test with our with our platform, um, and this and so it should be pointed out this is really a CXL focused thing. So this is not PCI Gen 6, right? This is more about the CXL protocol. Um, could be uh, 3.1 or 1.1 uh, components, 2.0, 3.0, 3.1. Um, you know, we'll take anything to test. So I encourage you to reach out. My email address is on that slide. Um, and see if this is the right fit for your particular device because it, it will benefit, you know, not only us, but you and the ecosystem um, at, at whole. Then, then um, like Srini pointed out, uh, we're planning to tape out Atlas 3 in July. Um, that gives us samples toward the end of the year. 
and we plan on putting those on two different board level platforms um, to enable this level of testing. The first one is our RDK, our Rapid Development Kit. And this is, this is really the superset. This is our full validation system. This is probably overkill for interoperability. Um, this, is, this has not only CHEM connectors on it, um, it has MCIO connectors, SMA connectors, it has a wide variety of things along with all the debug ports and things like that. So it's probably a little overkill for uh, standard interoperability, but what I don't have is a picture of our other uh, uh, vehicle, and that's, uh, that's what we call it our host interface board, um, or HIB, and it's, uh, it's a CHEM form factor board uh, by 16 to the host, and it has our 144 lane switch on it. And then um, on the top, there are two female uh, chem connectors, and there are also uh, four, four, I believe, four to six uh, MCIO connectors for different types of connectivity. And so with, with these two platforms, what I encourage the ecosystem to do is to you know, work with us, you have my email address, so that we can start planning to be able to trade equipment to do interoperability testing together because again, right, without without that kind of interoperability and that, you know, that ecosystem work, a lot of this is going to take a much longer time than, you know, than we think. So, with that, Srini. Yep. Thanks, Rick. So we talked about PCIe and CXL being the most important open standards-based uh, internal fabric. And that trend is firmly set in, and we told you what we are doing on our side to accelerate it. Rick, we also told you about what we are doing to enable the ecosystem. Now, looking forward to it. So the, um, I mean, we, we talked about open internal AI fabric. What it means is being able to connect CPUs on the north, CPU complex on the north, accelerator complex on the south, uh, various components and various use cases. So that, I think, is pretty well understood. Um, but we are not stopping there. Our customers and our partners want to go and take PCIe and CXL fabric much further than uh, an internal AI fabric. They're asking us to create a high performance, low latency, standards based, uh, coherent interconnect for the GP GPU complex. Um, again, let me repeat this a high performance, low latency, cache coherent um, south side connectivity interconnect between for accelerators. And that's what we are doing. So today we are publicly announcing um, our Atlas 4. Um, Atlas 4 is our PCIe Gen 7. It's a PCIe Gen 7 um, and CXL uh, 3.x switch. And we are not only accelerating Atlas 3, as you saw, um, we are significantly accelerating um, our PCIe Gen 7. Um, we are highly confident um, that we'll be very successful in executing this Atlas 4 because Gen 5 to Gen 6 is a complicated transition. Gen 6 to Gen 7 is fairly standard. We have the right technology. It's based on our Broadcom internal 128 gigs SIRTIS. It will be based on 3 nanometer. And the best of all, it will be available just 12 months uh, after we have Gen, Gen 6 samples will be available. So 12, 12 months after Gen 6 samples, we will have Atlas 4 Gen 7 samples will be available. Yes, sir. That's true. PCIe, we will be, we are running ahead of PCIe SIG, and hopefully we will take SIG also along with us. So we are talking to SIG to accelerate. And we also expect, I mean, that's the, I mean, the fair question. We also expect there will be some things that the PCIe SIG will do, and we may have to reconcile those and adjust in, in our B0. But A0, we will hit A0 by December 2025. It, it, yeah, fair point. 128 gig Gen 7. And, and also, it's important to note that we are not doing this in vacuum. Um, there is a healthy partner ecosystem um, that's doing this along with us. 
If no questions, thanks for the opportunity for us to present our roadmap and, um, and say and show that we are significantly accelerating our Gen 6 and Gen 7. Thank you. <coughs>